Hello. Thank you for listening to Your Daily Bible Verse, the podcast that examines one verse each day to learn more about God and His will for us. I'm your host, Jennifer Slattery, and after this short word from our sponsor, we'll dive into today's Bible verse, John 17, 3. Today's Bible verse is John 17, 3. Now, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. This is eternal life, Jesus said. Not that we follow a bunch of rules, not that we perfectly abide by the Ten Commandments, not that we go to church every time there's a worship or a prayer service, or that we attend every Bible study, not even that we serve the world through self-sacrificial acts of service. While those are all great things, those are all evidences of our faith, they are not the basis for our faith or our salvation. This is eternal life, Jesus said in John 17, 3, while praying to his Father, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Now, when you read the words in context, you realize he's referring to so much more than our salvation. Yes, Jesus offers us that, but his gift isn't just for some future day when we quote-unquote graduate to heaven, as some people call it. That eternal, abundant, beyond expectations life, it starts here and now, and it's characterized by peace, joy, truth, freedom, and emotional and spiritual vitality. And how does Jesus say that we access that life? By knowing God really knowing him deeply and personally. The ancient Greeks had different words for know, and we see two in particular used in relation to Christ. One, often used in 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, is Ido, which means to have intellectual, factual knowledge on a topic or related to a person, like how we know that objects thrown into the sky eventually fall back to earth, or how we know that the sun is hot or the earth is round. Those are facts we just, we just know. But then there's another type of knowledge, gnoskos, that Christ used here. This is an intimate knowledge that comes through personal experience, like what occurs in our relationships with one another. We might begin with a factual knowledge. We know the person exists. Maybe someone tells us about where they work or where they live, but we don't truly really know them, not enough to trust them. Our trust develops and deepens, however, as our head knowledge becomes personal, as we come to gnoskos them on a deeper level. This, Jesus said, is eternal life, that you know me, the loving, faithful, sacrificing Son of God. And that word, gnoskos, it was the same word that Jesus used in John 14, 9, when he asked, don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Some commentators suggest Jesus's question was more rhetorical, that he was saying, Philip, hey, you know me, you've walked beside me, you saw the miracles I performed, you heard my teaching, you know me, God's son, the Messiah. But at the same time, Philip didn't truly know Jesus, not to the depth he and the other disciples would after his death and resurrection. Prior to Christ's death and resurrection, the disciples knew that he was loving. They had seen him touch lepers, reach out to the marginalized, heal the sick, speak tenderly to those enslaved to sin. They had witnessed numerous examples of his love and of his power. But the power he displayed over death and the love he displayed on the cross, that was a love and a power beyond comprehension. And the more Philip and the others knew of that love, the more they knew about the God who is love, the more they experienced his abundant, overflowing, ever-growing life within. The same is true for us. The more we come to know Jesus personally and intimately by just living life with him, the more we come alive. He is an inexhaustible well of goodness, of peace, of love, and light. A well he invites us to continually draw from as we grow ever closer to our Savior. And that is how we experience the peace, the joy, and the supernatural transformation Christ promised. God's strength perfected within. Let's pray. 
Jesus, thank you so much for your invitation to come to you, to seek you each day, to know you for who you truly are, our loving, ever-present, all-powerful Savior. You are one with the Father. You are one with the Holy Spirit. You are God's beloved Son. You are the sacrificial Lamb who paid for our sins and made a way for us to become close with you and close to God the Father. When we're anxious, help us to remember the unfathomable power you displayed when you conquered sin and death. When we're hurting, remind us of the love that pursued us and redeemed us at the cost of your life. And you are still pursuing us, Lord. You are inviting us to come close, to rest in you. When we're discouraged or feel defeated, help us remember your sovereignty. You chose us for a purpose and you are fully capable of bringing your purposes to pass. Whatever we face or encounter, we know that you, Lord, are more than enough. So draw us ever closer to you. Help us to know you more, our Lord, that we may grow ever closer to our Savior. In your name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening to Your Daily Bible Verse, a production of Life Audio and the Salem Web Network. If you enjoyed this episode, would you leave us a rating and review in your favorite podcast app? It helps us connect to more listeners like you. This episode was produced by Kelly Gibbons and Stephen Sanders with executive oversight by Stephen McGarvey. We want to thank our wonderful hosts, Jennifer Slattery and Grace Fox. You can hear more from Jennifer by visiting jenniferslatterylivesoutloud.com. And you can find out more from Grace by visiting gracefox.com. For more inspirational, faith-affirming podcasts, visit lifeaudio.com.